now that we know how to use the price retracement and price extension tools, let's put both of these powerful tools together and use them to find the ultimate trading pattern. Is there one pattern better than all the rest? Absolutely. And what is it called? The best geometric pattern to use is what is commonly referred to as the Gartley pattern. H.M. Gartley was the author of the book Profits in the Stock Market and a prominent Wall Street educator. He was even friends with the legendary trader Jesse Livermore. He toured extensively teaching people about technical analysis. When Gartley published Profits in the Stock Market, he charged $1,500 for this book, which at the time was a lot of money. But if you compare this book with what was available at the time, you'll see that the price was worth it. And you'll notice how Gartley was really ahead of his time. In the 1990s, the public became increasingly aware of this technical analysis classic when Larry Pesavento included something he referred to as the G222 or the Gartley 222 in his books. He called it this because the pattern he is referring to was found on page 222 of Gartley's book, Profits in the Stock Market. I picked up on Larry's work and expanded on it and published the book, The Gartley Trading Method, New Techniques to Profit from the Market's Most Powerful Formation in 2010. But let's first look at Gartley's Gartley. In Profits in the Stock Market, Gartley states the following about his namesake pattern. In 8 out of 10 cases, wherein each of these specific conditions occurs, a rally which will provide a worthwhile profit ensues. In the other two cases, only small losses have to be taken. I don't know about you, but these statements sound good to me. 8 out of 10, small losses. Winning more than you lose, and when you do lose, it's not a disaster. It's a small loss, according to Gartley. This is what gets my attention. In Profits in the Stock Market, Gartley refers to his namesake pattern as one of the best trading opportunities. He didn't say, hey, here's the Gartley pattern. He didn't call it that. On the left is the pattern that appears in Gartley's book that he simply refers to as one of the best trading opportunities in 1935. On the right, you can see a very different picture of what today is referred to as the Gartley pattern. Notice that even the labels have changed. Also, the ABCD move that we looked at in the section under the price extension routine, it's not clearly defined in Gartley's illustration. This feature, along with Fibonacci ratios, were later added by Larry Pesavento. Let's look at a simple bullish Gartley pattern. We first notice a trend move, and this is followed by a counter trend move. Notice the structure of the counter trend move. We looked at corrective structures like this in the previous section when we discussed price extensions. Once the counter trend move is complete, the assumption is that the trend will reassert itself. So we would buy here. And if you're right and the trend does reassert itself, there should be a significant move up. So in this box, this is a bullish Gartley pattern. Remember that Gartley said, when you do lose, that it's a small loss. This is what he meant. If we put a protective stop at the beginning of the pattern, right here, this is where Gartley tells us we should put our stop with this pattern. This is what he meant. If we put the stop there, the risk on this trade is not significant compared to the typical targets that are achieved with this pattern when we're right about the direction. So you notice that there's a little bit of risk for a potential large reward. Now let's look at how the Gartley pattern relates to other classical technical patterns. Here's an example of a bullish Gartley pattern. Notice that it could also be a double bottom. Most of you watching this video will not take this trade, this bullish Gartley trade setup, even when you can easily identify it in advance. Why? Because it's a contrarian pattern. Most people cannot stomach putting a trade on where the blue arrow is. 
it really looks like you'd be trading against the trend with this trade. That is why this pattern will always work. Because as the market gets close to the previous low, most people are very uncomfortable and don't want to put a position on. Even if we have a close stop and don't risk much money, they're not interested. If you feel uncomfortable about the structure, just remember, most retail traders lose money. And most retail traders will not take this trade here. And that is why you must. So the garley can look like a double bottom or a double top. It can also look like a head and shoulders pattern. This is a bearish Gartley pattern. It is also a head and shoulders pattern. If you don't know what a head and shoulders pattern looks like, here's an example. This high would be the left shoulder. Here's the head. And here is the right shoulder, this high here. A sell signal is generated when there's a break below the neckline. And that can be seen here. This head and shoulders trade would have worked out great as the market continued to decline after the break below the neckline, which happened right here. This would be a sell signal at the break below the, the neckline. However, notice that our bearish Gartley signal that was generated was over here uh, at a much higher level, showing the superiority of the Gartley pattern. If you like head and shoulders, you can even use the Gartley pattern to filter your head and shoulders trades. In addition to the head and shoulders pattern, the Gartley pattern shows up in the Elliott Wave Theory as well. The bad news about the slide is that we're going to talk a little bit about Elliott Wave, and some of you might not know what that is. The good news is that you don't really need to know about Elliott Wave. All you need to do is look for Gartley patterns. In super simple terms, Elliott Wave Theory states that all trends are made up of five waves and all corrections have a minimum of three waves. So here's an example, wave one, two, three, four, five. There's a five wave sequence followed by a simple A, B, C correction, three waves there. The most typical correction is similar to what we discussed in the section about the price extension tool. Remember where wave A would be about the same length as wave C here. This correction is referred to in Elliott Wave terms as a simple ABC zigzag correction. So as stated, a five wave sequence is a trend which is followed by a counter trend. So this whole structure here can be referred to as a bullish Gartley pattern because this five wave sequence is a trend followed by a counter trend, ABC. This would be a buy signal. There's a, a big bullish Gartley pattern there. In addition, there are two smaller Gartley patterns within this larger structure. There is also one here. Wave three is a trend move. There's wave three followed by wave four, which is a counter trend move. This would be once again a bullish Gartley pattern you would buy here. Do you notice the other Gartley pattern? Right here. In this example, wave one is the trend move followed by wave two, which is a counter trend move and you would buy right here at the end of wave two. This Gartley pattern is the best of the best. Wave three right here is usually the biggest of the five wave, a five wave Elliott wave sequence. And this Gartley pattern allows you to participate in that big wave three move. If you take a trade at the completion of the Gartley pattern, you will always be trading with the trend and it really doesn't matter what the wave count is. You'll be trading wave three, wave five, or wave six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It really doesn't matter what the wave count is if you just look for these simple Gartley patterns. So really, who needs Elliott Wave? So now, let's find out how we'll use the price retracement and price extension techniques to find our Gartley patterns. 
To help us to identify a valid bullish Gartley pattern, we first need to use the price retracement tool. First, find the trend move of the Gartley pattern here. So we would measure that range. Remember geometry is measuring, measuring in this case from the low to the high, that would be 100% of the range. We would measure it and then calculate your support levels. We will be using a 78.6% retracement level through the geometric trading course level 0 and level 1 to calculate the completion of Gartley patterns. And this is what a 78.6% retracement level would look like based on the trend move from the low to the high. 78.6 is pretty much almost three quarters or just past three quarters of the way uh, down so you can eyeball it and notice that it's around there. Now that we have the retracement target plotted, we now have to add the price extension target. Ideally, these targets should land very close to each other, and if they do, we will have a valid bullish Gartley pattern. Now let's look at the price extension tool. How do we do that? Now let's use the price extension tool. This tool helps us to identify the end of a counter trend. Now to make your projection, you would have to measure the range of the first leg of the counter trend, which is this portion here. We would measure from that high to that low. Then we would project that range from here. This is the beginning of the second leg down. Now these three data points will allow us to plot a projection on our chart. If the market hits this target, that means that the two counter trend declines have the same price range. This is one of the most common corrective structures in technical analysis. As mentioned, if the price retracement target lands beside the price extension target, we have a valid bullish Gartley pattern. Let's see what that would look like on a chart with a real example of what we call a trend continuation Gartley pattern. In this example, we're going to look at using the price retracement tool along with the price extension tool together to find a Gartley pattern. First, let's apply the price retracement tool. Go to tools, levels, price retracement, we choose the low here, the high here, and we drag across our Fibonacci retracement levels. As we can see, the market came down and touched this lower level, which is the 78.6% retracement. So that means that we don't have to display this 61.8% retracement, so we'll remove that one. Now we have the retracement clearly displayed on the chart. Now we're going to apply the price extension tool. So we go to tools, levels, price extensions, and we're going to use this tool on this correction here. It looks like this could be the first leg of an ABC correction. And if that's the case, we would measure this range and project it from this high. So what we would do is click this high, click this low, and then project that range from this high here. So we'll click that. That's our third click. So once again, we need three data points to make a price extension projection. So my fourth click, I drag my line across here and the fourth click drops it there. As you can see, these two projections are clustering together nicely here, and this identifies the completion of a bullish Gartley pattern. The Gartley pattern, this is the impulsive phase right here, or the trend move, followed by a counter trend move. This initial decline, a bit of a rally and then once again a final decline here where these two legs this leg and this leg 
are equal to each other in price. Ideally, what you want is these two projections to land right on top of each other, but that doesn't happen very often. But this is close enough. Once we have the projections landing close to each other, we have an identifiable zone where we expect a reversal to take place for the Gartley pattern. As, as you can see, it did take off from this area going forward. So that's how you use the, the price retracement tool and the price extension tool together to find valid Gartley patterns. Now that we know how to use the ultimate trading pattern, let's get out there and start trading. Whoa, hold on. Yes, you know enough to be dangerous, but before you get out there and hurt yourself, remember that we have only talked about putting a trade on. How about taking it off? Do you know how to do that? Where are we going to put our protective stops in case we're wrong? We're going to consider how to use one of the best trailing stops out there in the next section entitled Stop Getting Stopped Out.